Hey everyone, Rua here. Right, first things first, sorry this took so long to get done. Winter has indeed come down here, and it hit me particularly hard for some reason. With that out of the way, it's time for another job guide. Warrior is literally the first job a new player sees as an option when first creating a character, and at first, many would be tempted to drop it when they get an advanced job unlocked. Warrior is advanced though, far more complex than even some seasoned players know. Let me take you through it and see if I can't teach you a few things. At face value, Warrior's purpose is really straightforward. It's the quintessential frontline fighter in this game. Wearing an assortment of heavy armor and swinging a personal armory's worth of weapons, this is a job that specializes in dealing heavy damage to keep attention away from its more vulnerable backline. Warrior is also a really good team player, and has a few tricks tucked away for not only amping up its own damage outputs, but more importantly, also amping up the damage of that of its fellows. Experienced warriors can face up against most foes they encounter, but they are still ultimately only half the equation for a successful battle. Right, so what has the job got going for it? Well, Warrior's true calling card is that it can pick up literally any weapon it finds and kill things with it. It's pretty much the John Wick of melee jobs. No other job in this game has the options available quite like a Warrior does. On a similar note, its proficiency with so many weapons means a Warrior is great for forming skill chains, and because of this, it works well with pretty much any other melee job it ends up in a group with. It has its favourite weapon types for sure, but the options are thankfully still there. Warrior also has a fearsome SP ability. Two at a stretch, but definitely the most dangerous pair for utter carnage when stacked together. Mighty Strikes and Brazen Rush together result in some absolutely ridiculous spike damage output. For this reason, and a few others, Warrior is widely acknowledged in the endgame community as one of, if not the strongest job in the game to use in a Zerg Rush fight. Where the goal is to not use any real strategy, it's just to drop the target ASAP. Another reason Warrior is so welcome in endgame is because it has the potential to push the damage output of others to the next level through its unique version of Warcry. Warcry with a savagery trait added. Savagery gives a substantial TP bonus for the duration of Warcry, so other jobs like Dark Knights and especially Samurai are all too keen to buddy up with Warriors whenever they can. Warrior's primary weapon, the Great Axe, has a selection of break weapon skills, which deal little damage themselves but are very useful in weakening a target. It will cost personal DPS, but it will also contribute to the overall performance of the group underlining again just how much of a team player the job is. Great Axe also has Felcleave, the most reliable AoE weapon skill in the game for consistency, range and damage output. Finally, Warrior is really durable if its player has invested in a proper mitigation set, which you should and which I'll go into later if you need some pointers on it. It will struggle as a proper endgame tank for events like Dynamis, but depending on the task at hand, it can handle some high-end content very well. Failing that, it makes for a brilliant support tank if the main tank goes down. On to what is wrong here. As you can probably guess, having so much armor and so many weapons available means that a warrior's inventory can be very heavy. It can also cost you a fair penny to get everything in order as well. Not as much as it used to before the advent of crafting shields, but it's still something to be mindful of. Warrior's sheer arsenal also takes a lot of memory retention to get the most out of. This is a pretty advanced aspect of the job. Most melee jobs have one or two main weapons they excel at. Warrior has far more than that. Knowing what weapons to use in different situations is the hallmark of a top tier warrior, and this might take a lot of getting used to. Warriors also have to be very wary of targets which have strong paralysis attacks, or who can otherwise mass dispel. This is because Warrior is similar to Monk in that it needs to have a rotation established for its abilities to maximize its damage output. Said abilities being lost can therefore really hurt. On that note, Warrior has really low magic evasion, even for a heavy melee job. 
Nowhere near that of Monk and Samurai who both have their SU3 sets to help them out, or Dark Knight which has the resist paralysis trait. This isn't much of an issue for magic damage, but it certainly is for status ailments. It does have some options for alleviating this, namely the Volti set from Dynamis, but yeah, good luck getting a full set of that in a pinch. Wario is also extremely dependent on other jobs to keep it in the fight, namely a good healer who can not only respond to sudden sharp drops in HP, but also keep on top of the ailments the warrior could well be buried under. Now, the same can be said for other melee jobs, but this just brings me to my next point. Unlike jobs like Monk, Samurai Ninja, and Dark Knight, a warrior has no options for mitigating damage other than Defender, which really hardly qualifies. The last two qualms concern a warrior's tanking ability. Although it has the means of generating volatile energy through its damage output, it has absolutely no way of reliably generating cumulative energy. This literally cuts Warrior's tanking potential in half before it even gets out the door. Put simply, this means that if the target either resists physical damage or puts up shields, then a Warrior is just not going to be able to hold the line. This is why it's better suited to being a support tank rather than a proper tank. Warrior's merits are a tale of two halves. Group 1 is not really set in place, aside from reducing Warcry's reuse timer. The other 5 points can either go into Berserk's reuse timer, or into giving yourself 5% extra double attack rate. The decider here will be how good your equipment is, and if it has enough double attack in it already. It will also depend on whether or not you have job gifts as well. Most will go with double attack rate, but Berserk is still an option. Group 2 is literally set in stone. You are maxing out Tomahawk and Savagery. No ifs or buts about it. I'm not going to even bother going into the other two options. Just go with me. I mentioned it earlier on, but Mighty Strikes is a warrior's first SP. It's really simple. It turns all a warrior's physical attacks into critical hits. Here's the thing though, it also turns all of your weapon skills, multi-hits included, into critical hits. Suffice to say, when Mighty Strikes is up for its 45 second duration, your damage will shoot into freaking orbit. It's also an option to include some critical hit damage pieces in your sets during Mighty Strikes, but depending on the weapon skills you're using, it might not be worth the exchange. Berserk and Aggressor. Chances are you already know what these two do from using them as subjob abilities, but Warrior mains are slightly different. Berserk increases a warrior's attack power by 25% when it's first learned, but it starts increasing in power past level 50 in increments of 2%, before finally capping out at 35% at level 90. Berserk also lowers physical defense by 25% as a trade-off, but this can be mitigated by going into a more defensive set if needs must. Aggressor increases accuracy by 25 45 if job points are invested in it, while also reducing evasion as a trade-off. Where these two also differ from merely being used from a sub-job, is that Warrior has JSE pieces which increase their durations. Berserk in particular can be extended by just over a minute, and considering its 5 minute reuse timer, it can be kept up almost full time if merits are invested into getting its timer down. This is why some people like going with Berserk reuse timer merits. Warcry, Warrior's Headline Act Warcry increases the attack power of everyone it affects by roughly 11%, but that's not its main draw. Oh no. Its real benefit comes from when the savagery trait attached to it transfers to everyone. By itself, when capped out, savagery will give 500 TP bonus but when it's used with the Relic Head, it gives 700 TB bonus for a full minute. Add an Aeonic Weapon's 500 into the equation, and a player only needs 1800% TP, and it will be treated as though they were firing at 3000. Warcry's use is typically planned ahead of time by a group to maximize its effects during a crucial phase of a fight. For this reason, you should make a party line macro clearly saying that it has been used. Warcry benefits some of Warrior's weapon skills more than it does others, 
We'll go into this later on. Blood Rage is Warcry's little brother. It's a good ability, but it won't give the same devastating results as its more popular big brother. Blood Rage greatly increases the critical hit rate of everyone it hits, and for a similar duration as Warcry 2, just over a minute with JSE. With Jolt Points invested, the increase is a whopping 40%, so it can be used to push certain weapon skills further, but sadly, not too many of Warriors, at least not ones worth using over better options anyway. Something crucial to remember is that Warcry and Blood Rage both overwrite each other, so be sure to not get your lines crossed and to stagger the use of the two. Restraint is probably the most worthless ability Warrior gets, largely down to a major design flaw. Restraint, called such because it used to prevent you from landing critical hits before it got patched, increases your weapon skill power with each successive attack you land. Sounds great, right? Nah, here's why. Not only is the increase extremely small, but the accumulated total resets after each weapon skill. You'll therefore never see any major effect from this, unless you hold off from weapon skilling for a few solid minutes, for some insane reason. Warrior's weapon skill frequency has gone up so much since the ability was added in the Abyssia days, so it's really not aged well, it's completely unfit for purpose. Use it if you want, but if you forget it even exists, people won't get on your case about it. Retaliation is a complicated ability. Like it implies, it gives the warrior a chance to retaliate whenever they are attacked. Only a single attack, you cannot double attack on a retaliation, sadly. This is not like counter you'd see from a monk. Unlike counter, retaliation does not actually cancel out the incoming attack, it'll still go through, so it's not to be used for mitigating damage. What it does do, however, again unlike counter, is actually give the warrior TP whenever a retaliation attack lands. Retaliation is pretty much warrior spikes, it's a damage boosting ability rather than a defensive one. Its proc rate is dependent on the delay of your main hand weapon, with lower delay weapons seemingly having a higher rate of activation. While we're here, we might as well skim over Provoke. Provoke should need no introduction. It instantly spikes your volatile enmity by 1800. That's it. It's a really bad ability for enmity, since the enmity it gives wears off after 30 seconds. Only ever use it as a very last ditch resort. Defender is the inverse of Berserk. It increases physical defense by 35%, while reducing physical attack power by 25%. Defender is the closest thing to damage mitigation Warrior has, but few situations really call for it, unless things have really gone south and you absolutely need to hold the line. I've mostly used it for gathering crowds without taking too much excessive damage. Defender can be full time though, as its duration of 3 minutes is the same as its reuse timer. Tomahawk is an interesting ability that needs a bit of an explanation. Tomahawk lowers any resistances targets may have against certain types of damage by 30%, factoring in JSC increases. Physically, this mostly has a notable effect on things like flans, elementals and undead but you'd be surprised just how many other families it works on. Tomahawk also affects magic resistances. Seriously, you won't be using magic anytime soon, but others in your group might. You won't use Tomahawk all that often, but when you need it, you'll be very grateful you put merits into it. Brazen Rush is a warrior second SP. Brazen instantly puts your double attack rate to 100%, but it quickly decays over the 30 second duration. You should already have a pretty high double attack rate in your TP set, when you've come a ways along the road anyway, but Brazen's effect, like Mighty Strikes as well, also applies to weapon skills, and this is where it really shines. Brazen will spike your weapon skill damage for its short duration, but it works incredibly well with Mighty Strikes. Stacked together, and with Warcry adding even more stopping power, it's really hard for me to find a more devastating set of abilities. Abilities which can rip massive chunks of HP off a target, 
if not utterly flatten it before they all wear off. It's a one-off since it's two SP stacked together, but it's a pretty spectacular one-off. The tips and tactics section of this guide is largely going to involve me going over Warrior's weapon classes, but there are a few things to address as well. Let's start with the absolute biggest no-go for anyone in a group with a Warrior. Do not, under any circumstances whatsoever, ever use Warcry from a sub-job. This is because Warcry overwrites itself, regardless of the remaining duration on the one currently in effect. So if someone uses Warcry from a sub-job, they not only severely nerf the attack bonus, but also, even worse, remove the TP bonus effect of Savagery. I know of at least two endgame link shells in Azura where this is an offense worthy of a reprimand, and a broken link pearl if ignored. This next point needed me to be on another job to make. Warcry might be Warrior's headline act, but don't forget that Blood Rage exists. Blood Rage helps the Warrior less than Warcry does in sheer spike damage, but it still will help certain jobs out a great deal. Off the top of my head, the four jobs that really benefit from it are Monk, Thief, Dancer, and Blue Mage. Try to communicate with your fellows to work out which order the two abilities ought to be used in. Monk will benefit greatly from Blood Rage during Impetus, but more from Warcry when footwork goes up whereas Thief will benefit from Warcry when Sneak and Trick attack are up, but far more from Blood Rage when they're not. Be a true team player and consider your party members. Putting together a solid TP set for Warrior is pretty much the same process as any other job. You need to make sure your gear haste capped, while also working in enough accuracy to ensure you don't miss a whole lot. As far as multi-attack and store TP go, Double attack should be the focus, since you've already got a fair bit of it from job traits and gifts, 33% counting everything before you even leave the Mog House. I personally have 88% double attack in my set, but my set isn't the best one, but it's a good place to start I hope. Store TP is also important, but if you're using a great axe it should be really easy to get a good 5 hit build, which I advise always over a 4 hit build. When things get real, it'd be a good time to go into your DT hybrid set. Don't stay in your base TP set and get smashed into the dirt if everything has gone south. Take the hit to your damage output and turtle up. Your damage output will go down when you're in a DT set, but if you're dead, you're not doing any damage at all. Putting one of these together is really easy as you can see. It's literally a case of swapping out a few pieces for more damage taken reduction to make sure you hit the 50% cap. You will need the Tempest Fugit to remain at the gear haste cap though, that's something important to underline. Before getting into weapons, I need to explain what the Fencer trait is and how you ought to use it. Fencer is a trait three jobs get, the other two being Bard and Beastmaster, but Warrior by far has the strongest iteration of it. Fencer gives the Warrior a major increase to critical hit rate and more importantly, a huge TP bonus when only using a single one-handed weapon. In an optimal build that you're seeing now, a Mastered Warrior will have 750 TP bonus and a 15% critical hit rate bonus before Warcry and Blood Rage. To me, this trait and build was meant for three weapon skills, Savage Blade, Mistral Axe, and Black Halo. Offensive build also suits retaliation well, since there seems to be an oddly higher retaliation rate with a lower delay weapon, something which really helps alleviate TP gain issues provided the warrior can hold the target's attention. Fencer is not cancelled by equipping a shield, and there are two shields a warrior would use with this build. The Adapa shield from Omen for a more defensive build, and the Blur shield plus one for all-out damage. On the flip side, there is a viable dual wield build for warrior, but it does need some know-how to get it to work properly. Subbing Ninja only gives 25% dual wield, and you will need a little bit more than that to reach the delay cap. You can do this by using the Amicho Gauntlets and the ever faithful Supernomimi. The only reason to use a dual wheel build is if you're either fighting something so insanely dangerous you absolutely need the protection of Utsuzemi, or if you're just zerging with a Dolichanus, when TP scaling is not a concern and you therefore do not need Fencer. I've only ever used this build a handful of times, but I can certainly vouch for its use. My only problem with it is that if you want to swap to another weapon, you're potentially hamstringing yourself by subbing Ninja, as you'll lose Samurai Sub's many wonderful benefits for pretty much every other weapon class. 
It is a blast to use though, I can't deny that. Okay, on to weapons. Great Axe is a warrior's primary weapon, as it has the highest skill in its class. Great Axe is a brilliant all-rounder, generally speaking, packing utility in the form of its break weapon skills, more on these very shortly. Great crowd control with fell cleave, and stellar skill chain options attached to some very powerful weapon skills. With the Chango being fully capped out, Great Axe goes from being just great to possibly Warrior's most powerful weapon. This is up for debate as most things are, but I personally favour Great Axe as a Warrior's best weapon. The benefits are just too numerous for it to not be. Great Axe only has a handful of downsides. Some weapon skills it has, namely Uko's Fury and a few others, have not aged too well. They're usable, but they're not the best around. Break skills are nice for utility, but they deal very little damage themselves, so using them will cost you a bit of personal damage. The pass result, if a passer is being run, shouldn't concern you too much though, because if you're using break weapon skills, everyone ultimately wins. And this is only ever an issue if something keeps erasing their effects, meaning you need to constantly reapply them. Finally, as amazing as the Chango is, it can be a mission to get your hands on it without having to resort to a mercenary service if you're a new player. Break skills are Great Axe's signature, and here we'll go over them. Shield Break hits the target's evasion for 40, handy when fighting high level or thief NMs. Armor Break is really strong, it reduces the target's defense by 25%, essentially making it Warrior's answer to a Dragoon's Angon, among other options. Weapon Break does the same amount, but instead lowers target attack power. Really useful when you suddenly find yourself tanking. Ball Break smashes the target's defense, attack, evasion, and accuracy, but all for halved effects of the previous Break skills. Still, Full Break sees a lot of use because it inflicts four ailments in one shot, and can therefore be used to trick certain NMs into removing those ailments, rather than using their more dangerous attacks. Another reason to use Fall Break is that it is an excellent skill chain opener, especially when solo or in a small group. The other Break skills only have Impaction as their skill chain attribute, but Fall Break is Distortion, so it opens up a multi-step light skill chain very nicely. Even if you're not getting Armor Break's full effect, Berserk should more than make up for it. Bell Cleave is another signature weapon skill Great Axe has in its toolkit. It's a single hit, area of effect, high damage attack with a high strength modifier. It's also heavily affected by weapon skill damage since it's a single hitter, so a proper weapon skill set will lean towards this and the strength modifier. Bell Cleave's great for wiping out crowds of fodder, and for a while it used to be the go-to method for mass farming before the advent of elemental blue magic. Best way to use Fell Cleave is to single out an anchor target, preferably the one with the most HP or highest defense, so it will survive until the very end. Its only real problem is that if said anchor keeps moving around, as target pathing will sometimes make it if a wall isn't around to exploit, it can be a pain to aim properly. Still, it's a really handy weapon skill which only adds to Great Axe's utility. Greatsword does one thing and does it well, sheer raw damage. Under both SPs, a warrior going nuts with resolution spamming will flatten most things very quickly. It faces some strong competition from a maxed out Chango, but for mid to entry level players, Greatsword will give them the best results. Finally, the best Greatsword warrior can use is the Mondante, a UNM drop which should be pretty easy to get. Many choose to stick with Greatsword until they can get a Chango, and I can see why. Greatsword's problems are glaring though. It's easily Warrior's worst weapon for any form of skill chaining, as resolution is the only skill worth using, and it's severely limited without the Lionheart a Runefencer has. Scourge does not count, since Ragnarok has pretty much become the butt of forum jokes. Greatsword does one thing and does it really well, but at the end of the day, it's still just one thing. It's a one-trick pony. Polearm is what a warrior should get out if they're fighting birds, or anything with a piercing weakness, which is surprisingly common. It's also warrior's best option by far for contributing to darkness skill chains. A star diver and impulse drive both have gravitation, and both can be used in a simple skill chain. The best polearm warrior can use is also pretty easy to get. It's the shining one from Ambuscade, 
a borderline broken weapon under the right conditions. Pole Arms only got two issues, really. One is that Sonic Thrust, being conal, is nowhere near as reliable as Fel Klee for crowd control. The other is that the Shining One kind of falls off whenever Warcry wears off, but that's more down to the way Impulse Drive scales damage than anything. Sword build is one I'm really quite fond of, especially when used in a sword and board fencer build. Sword bears some similarity to its two-handed cousin, but it has more utility. Flat blade can stun, sanguine blade can act as a great emergency heal, and since you'll be using it with a shield, you'll be a lot more durable against physical attacks. Savage blade is sword's go-to skill for punching out damage, and it's very good. I actually prefer it over resolution spamming given how fencer works. Thankfully, once again, the best weapons for the class are pretty easy to get. The Reikiko from Eshka and the Nagaling from Ambuscade are both viable, but I'm more fond of the Reikiko. Sword's downsides are that, again, like Greatsword, it's not that great for skill chaining unless another party member can cover fusion. Warrior does not get Knights of Round or Atonement, so it has no way of setting Savage Blade up with just sword weapon skills. Annoying, but it is what it is. Fencer builds also tend to build TP slower due to the fact that you're only using one single-handed weapon. Not so much of an issue given how Savage Blade will still hit hard with low TP, but it could be an issue when building to 1000% for a skill chain. Club's another unsuspected weapon, but it's absolutely devastating against Undead especially. Club can make a simple two-step light skill chain, and both weapon skills used to make it Warrior can amp up with Warcry or Blood Rage. Black Halo and Hexa Strike, respectively. Club's another weapon best used with a fencer build given how both those weapon skills work, and the best weapon for the class is the easiest to get. It's the Beryllium Mace from the Auction House, a weapon which will give you Hexa Strike. Weaknesses now, and it's really straightforward. Literally one thing, and that is that you'll never really have a need to use Club outside its niche of crushing undead, so you won't be seeing many Korea warrior running around with it as their primary weapon beyond that. Axe has got good skill chain options. Ruinator covers Distortion, Cloud Splitter covers Fragmentation, and Mistral Axe and Decimation both cover Fusion. The only thing missing is Gravitation, but you have a pole arm for that. Decimation is Axe's best weapon skill with a dollar Chanus, and since it only scales accuracy with higher TP, it's pretty consistent for good damage. Nice having a reliable weapon skill like that on hand. On that note, Axe is another class that has its best weapon come from Ambuscade. The dollar Chanus is a terrifying weapon during an SP Zerg, and even more so during a good skill chain. Axe feels a bit disjointed at times though. Its best weapon and skill, Dollar Chenis and Decimation, both work best with a dual wield build, yet Mistral Axe leans more towards a fencer build. It's really odd. This doesn't apply to everyone, but going from a two-hander or fencer build you'll usually use to a dual wield build can throw even some of the best players off I've found. Finally, Cloud Splitter needs a lot of Geomancer support to make even remotely viable, and it feels like a real missed opportunity in hindsight. Before we wrap this up, I'll showcase a few of my favourite skill chains Warrior can do by itself with just trust support. I've linked the Auction House Warrior thread below if you want to chase up an optimal weapon skill sets.
This brings me to the end of Warrior's Guide. Warrior is a really powerful job, probably the strongest melee job for raw damage in the game if I'm taking subjective preference out of the equation, and I hope I've done a decent job on conveying its essentials. I don't consider myself the best warrior player out there, far from it, but I think I know more than enough to pass it on like this. I'm sorry this has taken so long to get done, but I'm on the mend now and aiming to get back to a more regular upload schedule. I'll see you all in a few days for the Q&A.